What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I am here tonight with a review for Growing Up Hip Hop. This is season six, I believe, episode two. I believe it's season six. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the episode was titled, Don't Be Salty. That would go for Sandy. Now, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, you guys are watching this video or any of my other videos, and you like the content, do me a solid favor. Hit that subscribe button, you guys. Stop taking me out on a date and leave me with the bill at the end of the night. You know? All Let's right, you guys. So this episode. Now, last week, I didn't get to watch the episode. You know, I actually forgot that I just had Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta scheduled to record on my DVR. And I didn't set for um, this franchise to record. So I didn't get to do it last week. And I'm not going to talk about last week's episode because that... And when I did see it and saw Sam in that thong, G-string, whatever the hell you want to call it, I was like, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. So yeah, um, so we're at, this, at Sandy's party. I'm not calling her Peppa, I'm calling that Heffa Sandy. You know, I, just, I still feel some type of way about Sandy with this, the way that she and Cheryl do, um, you know, Spinderella. But that's neither here nor there. The question that I have when it comes to Sandy is, do you not have any friends your own age? Like you are partying with this cast. The people on this cast are my age and maybe younger. Only person I think that's younger than me is Twist and he's not that much younger than me. Um, but yeah, you partying with kids that are my age. Partying with kids that are my age. Girl, get a life. And then for me, it's the, it, the issue that I have with Sandy is you're so defensive of Sam. Why? It's just very creepy as hell to me. I'm just going to keep it real with you. It's creepy than a motherfucker. So after the JoJo and Tanise, they left the party. Mm, I'm, I'm, why do they keep, she kept saying that they family. No, they're not family. Yeah, Pep is, I mean, Sandy is just an interesting one, to say the least. So I'm, I'm, I'm done with that, because, I, I mean, Tyran went up and talked to her. You just can't reason with ignorance, and that's what I think Sandy is, is an ignorant person. So TT, so TT is out wedding dress shopping with her mother, um, you know, her mother-in-law to be, and her sister-in-law to be, and her friend. So the wedding dresses that TT tried on, she looked absolutely amazing in every last one of the dresses that she tried on. So then I, one of her friends mentioned Egypt. Girl, fuck Egypt and uh, Sandy at this point. I want to invite them to my wedding. They wouldn't even know. They wouldn't know where I'm getting married at. They wouldn't know the day. They wouldn't know the time. They wouldn't know anything. Like, no, I'm not going to. I'm not rocking with them, especially when they rock with somebody like a Sam. Very very weird oh yeah she just you know and on the on the flip side um you know tt knows nothing about what's going on with uh with egypt's wedding i would not want to know anything about that wedding i wouldn't want to know her wedding colors i wouldn't want to know who was in her bridal party i wouldn't want to know who's in sam's part groomsman who was a part of his groomsman i wouldn't want to know what flavor cake they got I wouldn't want to know how many guests they have. I wouldn't want to know who's marrying them. I don't want to know where they're getting married at. I don't want to know what day they're getting married. I don't want to know the time. I don't want to know anything about that wedding. Like, nothing. I would rather, I would, you know, if you said choose, choose amnesia or to know about this wedding, I'm going to say, you know what, give me amnesia. Give me amnesia. That way I can forget who a pepper is, a, 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 I can forget who a Sandy is and I can forget who a Egypt is and I can damn sure forget who a Sam is. Give me the amnesia for 500 Alex. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Give me the amnesia for 500. Actually give me the amnesia for the whole category, for the whole entire. Give me 500, 250, 1000. Give me all of it. Give me every bit of the amnesia. I don't need them. I don't want to know them. Please. But let's move on. All right, you guys. So then we see JoJo, Twist, Tanise. They all at um, Eric's place. And um, Twist gets a text message from Sandy. Sandy wants to meet up with Twist. 
Twist doesn't know why Sandy wants to meet up with him. You know, it's so interesting looking at Twist these days because I actually have I've known Twist for some years now. Since I, since he was, you know, I'm from East Texas, and he is the brother of I know people. Most people probably already know this. His brother is Zay. He's actually I actually went to school. I'm actually actually yeah. Zay's sister Jasmine is my classmate. She's my classmate. And then, like the six degrees of separation, my <clears throat> my eight year old little cousin, his dad happens to be um, Zay and his sister Jasmine's cousin. Like six degrees of separation. Like I know I've known them for years since I was a kid. So it's just interesting to see Twist and what he's done with his, you know, for himself. Because back in the day, in, in our hometown of Tyler. Twist and Zay were signed to this record label called BOC. Man, I remember tw I remember Zay's first single in our hometown. They played that shit religiously. Don't know why. The song actually, never mind. Shut up. Don't say anything. Keep it to yourself. But yeah, Twist got a text message from Sandy about her wanting to meet up with him. He's trying to figure out why she wants to meet up with him. I was thinking the same thing. Why does this woman... And I'm going to use the term loosely, woman, because she, and I'm saying loosely because she's just peculiar. The woman is just interesting. Again, where are your friends at? You ain't got no friends your age. That's why I say she's just an interesting character. So he feels that she wants to meet up with him about Sam. I would be just like Twist. I don't want to have any kind of conversations with you about Sam. And then number two, don't even feel like you can spring Sam on me. Um, next, let's move over to Angela and Daniel. Daniel in the face. Daniel's face looks... How do I want to say this? And be nice. He's not a bad looking guy. I don't want to put that out. Make it seem like he's, he's ugly or anything. Daniel's face looks like he's taking one too many punches to the face. Just like he's taking one too many punches to the face. Actually, you know what he looks like? You guys remember that episode of Martin when Martin got his ass beat up? And his face, you know, had all them knots on it? That's what Daniel looks like. Actually, that's exactly what Daniel looks like. But, um, yeah. So, Angela and Daniel have been dating for a few months at this point. And they talk about potentially, you know, moving. He's talking about moving to Florida. And then she's talking about she'll go with him. What? Why? Mm, mm, no, 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 not after a few months, after a few months of dating someone, I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, if they say, oh, I'm moving to like, I'm in Dallas. So if, if I'm dating and the person that I'm with says, hey, you know, for my job, I'm going to move out there to Atlanta or I'm going to move to California. Okay. Bye. I'm not going to uproot my life, you know, and I don't know where this is going. And, and then the fact that you have a child. I'm not uprooting my life and my child's life for you. Because let's say six months down the line, we're not together and I've uprooted my life. No, just wouldn't be me. But whatever. Let's, I mean, go for it. Angela got the money. But even, if, I mean, it, it really ain't about the money. It's just. No, I'm just not going to uproot my life for someone that I don't know how far this relationship is going to go. You know what I'm saying? Unless we're talking about getting married. No, thank you. But let's move on. All right, you guys. Next up, Tyran. So Tyran went and met up with Tretch. Tretch, in this scene, buddy, I got what you was talking about, but it was a complete stretch. <laughs> So Tyran is, you know, Tyran's talking about opening up a martial arts um, a school. And Tretch is like, you know what, he's got his back. And then he also told Tretch that he just got back from Vegas, you know, for Peps, uh, for Sandy's party. Sandy's party. So then he, here we go once again with this whole family situation. Because Tyran told Tretch that, you know, Sam and JoJo got into it. And once again, we're talking about their family. They're not. They're not. What, what is the fascination with Sam with these, I mean, these people are, it, it, 
it's like Sam has some kind of trance over them at this point. It's weird to me just to see it. So here's where I say that Tretch was, I got where Tretch was coming from, but Tretch was completely stretching this. So Tretch compared this whole, the thing with JoJo and Sam is this beef with them is more so like a social media beef or a beef for a storyline on this show. This fool had, the, had actually compared it to Biggie and Pac. I'm like, that is a complete stretch. If I've never saw a stretch in my life, that was a stretch, and you know it was. Like, you comparing a social media beef and a TV storyline to some real shit that happened where two people are dead. Neither one of these niggas gonna shoot each other. Okay? Just putting that out there. It ain't gonna blow up. It's not gonna be that big. I think Treasure was putting on for the cameras. So then we see Van <clears throat> Vanessa. So Vanessa, she calls TT to check on TT. And she's actually en route to meet up with Angela because they're doing a photo shoot. Don't know who they were doing a photo shoot for. Um, so they catch up. You know, she's talking to, you know, um, TT about motherhood. Her baby is so, he's such a cutie. Um, and then Vanessa talking about, you know, what it's like for her. She was homeschooling her daughter. Have my hats off to any of the parents out there who, through this pandemic, had to homeschool your kids. My hat is definitely off to you guys because <clears throat> my little eight-year-old cousin, looking at some of his homework, I was like, ooh, there is no way I could help you with that. Because I was looking at some work he was doing one weekend, and I'm just like, I couldn't help you with this. Like, I don't understand it. Like, and he's eight. I'm like, I don't understand this shit. Like this new way for them, what the, the what are, what they're teaching the kids these days, my old ass just don't understand it. Like there was a new way that they show kids how to multiply. I was like, huh? Like it was a, they had a box. They they drew a box, and I didn't understand the whole box thing because it was on Facebook. And one of my friends was like, it's really one of my friends who's a teacher. She's like, it's really easy. I'm like, that does not look easy. I'm like, that looks complicated. I'm like, why can't we just multiply the old way? You know, if you got, um, you know, 12 times five, you put the tw you put the 12, you put the five, and you, you know, you do this, this, and you're like, why, why can't we do it the old way? Instead of this box, and she said, but it's the same way, it's just simpler. I'm like, how is that simple? No, it ain't simple. But Suffice it to say, she's homeschooling. So, like I said, once again, hats off to her. So, they're talking about Angela and Daniel. They're talking about how things are going fast with Angela and Daniel. And I agree with what they're saying. Things are going very fast with them. So, when Vanessa gets to the photo shoot with Angela, they're definitely talking. And Vanessa feels some type of way because everyone has met Daniel at this point. With the exception of her, which that is interesting though. I don't know if Angela feels that she might be might judge her or something, but I mean I gotta agree this is going very fast. I'm not saying that he's a bad guy or anything, but you are moving very fast, and you've already introduced SJ to him. Nothing's wrong with that, but it's just like I said, it's just it's going a little fast. But that's neither here nor there. Um, let's move on. All right, you guys. Next. Let's talk about TT and Brianna. So Brianna went over to TT's house bearing gifts and you know, she sees the baby and they talk about the wedding. So TT wants to do a destination wedding to Jamaica, which is probably gonna be a little bit expensive. I mean, when is she get? Has she, have they already gotten married? I don't, you know, I don't follow none of these people on social media, so I don't know. Has she gotten married yet, or are they still planning? Um, but even with this pandemic, I mean, now with the protocol, I mean, can we? Are we able to travel? See, that that's going to be a thing now that people are starting to get vaccinated. I mean, they are selling those fake vaccine cards, so yeah. <clears throat> Now, the thing that threw me off was when she said that when she checks into a hotel and the people at the hotel think that the baby, her baby, is the nanny's baby. How stupid can you be? Because she's talking about she wants to have the same last name as her baby. That's 
I'm going to keep my mouth closed on that one. So then she talks about who she wants to invite to the wedding and how she's not so sure about inviting her family. I mean, it's your wedding day. I know your mom is tight knit about family and she would want her sister there, but ultimately it's your day and the only person that has the right to say who's going to be at that wedding and who's not is you. So if you don't want the likes of a Sandy or a Sam or a, ugh, a Sam or even um, Egypt, if you don't want them there, that is your decision and your prerogative. And your mom just has to be okay with it. I mean, your sister is foul. And why would I invite her? The hell? So next let's talk about Angela. It really wasn't much with this. And we saw Angela, she's getting settled in Miami. And her mom calls to check on her and SJ. They do talk about Vanessa and the fact that Vanessa still has yet to meet Daniel. And she's like, so does Vanessa feel some type of way about you guys maybe moving too fast? It's a possibility. I mean, Angela 1000% is moving way too fast. Just going to put that out there once again. She's moving too fast. Um, and then they, you know, Vanessa and her mother both brought up this thing about him being a boxer and her going there to see him. I mean, why would she be squ I mean, unless you, um, you know what, I guess, you know, he get hit one too many, he gets hit a little too hard and, you know, blood start gushing, maybe that can make her squeamish. I, I, I didn't understand that. So then to wrap the episode up, Sandy and Twist, they met up. I cracked up laughing the entire time that Twist was sitting with her dumb ass. <laughs> At first, it was hella awkward when they when he sat down. So then she says she just wants to get clarity about, you know, what is going on between him and Sam and why does he speak so negatively of Sam? And Twist was like, the issue that I really had was the nigga being on, on Instagram boxing in some draws, like he's wearing panties and he's boxing. Like that was his issue. So long story short, Peppa is trying to make it like he's homophobic. Cause he said, he said, you know what? He told her she defended her gay son-in-law. I cracked up when that nigga said that. But it's like, she's trying to paint him out as a homophobic person. I didn't get that vibe from him. Didn't get that vibe. Like I said, Sam is creepy and, and weird. Like, and she's like, you know, this is a different time. You know, men wear G-string. Men wear, she kept saying Speedos. I'm like, that is not a fucking Speedo. That was a G-string or a thong. And again, you are right. There's nothing wrong with wearing a G-string, a Speedo, or a thong. Ain't shit wrong with it. G-string, Speedos, thong, jockstrap. Nothing wrong with any of that stuff. But the question is... Why was he on Instagram shadow boxing with that shit on? Who the fuck does that? That was a weird, that was the creepy part. This nigga is on social media shadow boxing in a G string. Don't nobody want to see his pale ass in a G string boxing. Dude, put on some clothes. I'm actually with Twist, nigga. Put on some pants. Give your gay son in law some pants. Like, dude. Like, if he's modeling, that's one thing. Like, his OnlyFans. If he's doing it on OnlyFans, that's one thing. People are paying to see that, but on your Instagram timeline, who asked you to do that? Y'all are just weird. They are all weird. But that's the, that's the review, you guys. Be sure to like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel. And hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And share this video. Until the next one, you guys. Stay safe. Out there. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear a mask or don't wear a mask. Just be safe. And stay blessed, you guys. And I'll catch you guys later in the week's hottest topics, which will be up tomorrow morning. And I will see you guys also tomorrow night for... A brand new episode review of Ready to Love over on OWN. All right, guys, that's it. I'm signing off, and I'll see you guys later. Deuces.